Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and today we'll be dealing with this um, large assortment of things on the table in front of us and it's going to be centering around uh, the parang. So I previously made a video about how to mount the parang in the handle and since then I have made a sheath for it and this sheath is uh, nothing fancy, it's just made out of light gauge PVC. So I'll try and make a video about how I go through it step by step. Um, in the future, I have another parang coming in and probably I'll document that one. But uh, in essence, it's basically just a light gauge PVC folded over and little brass, brass eyelets, which I have um, drilled in and driven in at an interval of one and a half inches. So if you look at the tech lock, and other mounting systems. Most of them use a one and a half inch width uh, or other hole spacing. So, uh, well, it's a three quarter um, inch hole spacing for the tech locks. But if you do three quarter, it's gonna be really close. So I did uh, the alternate hole spacing, which is one and a half inches. So if you are making your own sheets, I would suggest sticking with one and a half inches. It's, I think, the most uh, practical spacing and quite universal in that sense. So. After making this, I made a few other, um, what should I say, accessory holders. So, what's going on? Yeah, it only goes in quite easily. Anyway, so this is the backing for uh, holding the rope. You can see it's quite discolored here. All I did was I just used the lighter and pressed that out. Um, this is for my Mora, this is for the fire steel, and we'll get to this story in a little bit. And lastly, this is for my little cricket lighter, or you Americans would call this a big lighter. I think the profile's almost the same. So that just goes in there. And I do not have a Kydex press, or everything that you see here was made by hand, uh, except for this, which was pressed between uh, my kid's playmat. That's why you can see it's not very pronounced, but it does the job. Anyway, um, getting down to it, uh, I'll show you what I used to drill the holes out. It's a Brad Point uh, drill bit, and the holes for these um, are, gosh, I think they're quarter inch, so that would make it 6.5 millimeters. Yeah, anyway, we'll just get a demo a bit on this one because I haven't drilled this out yet. So to start with, um, I'm using Chicago screws and if you do get Chicago screws, there's a couple of types. Uh, get the type where the female actually has a slot, if you can see here. So maybe I'll throw a picture up uh, to make it clear, but basically, so the other side is Phillips but the opposite side, most of them are smooth. So when you want to tighten it up, or better yet, when you want to open it up, you want to make any modifications without this slot, it's really, really difficult. So I got a bunch of these Chicago screws with the slots and we'll be basically putting this together now. I'm using 222 Loctite, which is basically the weakest Loctite, if you can call it that. Uh, they have the blue one, which is medium strength, and the dark red, which is the strongest one, which is almost like a locked out bond. So this will just help to hold the trids in place, and but it still can be opened up if need be. I'll be using some paracord to make a waist rope later on, a uh, traditional way, and uh, just a couple of screwdrivers, one flat tip and one Phillips for either side. So getting on with it, uh, let's just move everything off to the side. Oh, yeah, and fire steel. I'll toss out a few of these so I can pick them up easily. This is designed to be mounted here, here. Yeah, I think it was here. Yep, just about there. So, with that there, this was designed to be mounted here. So as you can see, this is a back-to-back -back piece. 
I hope it's thick enough, otherwise I have some longer ones here. But anyway, let's give it a shot. Oh gosh, 6.5 millimeters, that's good bits. Maybe I have to open it up a bit and go through here. All right. So apparently this does not fit. This is a five millimeter hole and these are supposed to be five millimeter um, holes. Anyway, um, no worries, I have a 5.5 millimeter. Which I will okay, so this is a 5.5 millimeter bit and I guess I just have to open this up a bit. I trust your old IKEA power screwdriver. Put it on slow speed. Okay, it's easy as that. And with that, we should be able to get a nice clean, yep, drop in. So I'm just going to open up the rest of the holes and I'll be right back. Alrighty then, so all the holes have been opened up and let's get down to mounting it. So I'm a right-handed, so this is how I'll draw my power on and actually the knife, supporting knife, will be on the outside. And this will be here, right? So now, this should make up just good enough. And I'll just put a screw in first, just to hold it in place. Let's see if I have, let's see if I have enough threads on it. Because I've got four layers. Oh, I'm getting quite a few thread turns. I think that'll be good enough. Okay. So, I need to get this one in first. I remember last time when I was test fitting it, I got it in late and that didn't make things easy at all. So, let's get this through. And let's put a touch off. Lock tight in. Just a dab. Just like that. That's all you need. Too much lock tight is not good. Yeah, I got some stuff there. We'll tighten it up once we get a couple more into place. Um, I need one up here. Okay, so now I'm going to cover up everything else. So I need to tighten this one up because this um, holds everything together. Okay, so that's been done off camera. And now the rest of the pieces are going to go in. So. In actual fact, for this knife part, I only need four, one, two, three, four, but because this is retaining at the back, I'll have to put one in the middle as well. And yeah, well, anyway, I've got a bunch of these screws. They don't add that much weight, so let's just get on with it. Test the uh, Mora now, retention. Perfect. It's a little bit tighter than I would want, but since this is going to be on the hip, getting bashed around with plants and all that, I think that's good enough. A little extra retention in that sense. So I think I will skip this and I'll go here. This tree is not getting a bit of a cross thread here. Is it because I used a screwdriver on it just now? Anyway, found a thread. Let's tighten that up. This is all just last bit of tightening. And I like to line up my so once again, just gonna tighten all of this off camera. 
So that's about done. I've got the knife holder, fire steel, and um, the rope holder here. Next is to get this in. So there's a problem here, and that's because when I put this in, um, to get the fire steel to sit flat, I, if you can see, there's a bit of a contour here. Let's get this out of the way. You can see there's a bit of a contour here. This is quite normal for the thumb grip. I had to sand it off, file it off. I used a file and just went at it. Um, this is supposed to sit. It's really, really snug. Oh. Oh, so you can see it getting quite at the bottom. It's supposed to go in flat and horizontal. There we go. And then, for normal practice, we use a cord to hold it in place. And now, this is my problem. Even if I put this way down here, if I'm taking this out, it's going to clash. So I need to actually pivot this out and probably raise it a smidge so it can come out like that. That would mean that I need to screw something misaligned and then take off this section here, I guess. So let's see. Um, let's get a marker pen. So bring this to the middle, probably somewhere here. This is the center. If you guys so. have not seen what a bread point bit is, it's basically a wood bit, but it has a little point at the back uh, in the front here. And that actually helps it locate and center itself when you're drilling through. So you can basically just find a spot, put it exactly on the dot that you, mar Oops, that you marked. And when you start drilling, there's a better chance of you not running off. So, my bread point is quite worn, but you could get at it like that. So, anyway, I'm going to have a drill at it and see what's what. And once that's at, done at 5mm, switch up the 5.5mm drill bit and get the proper whole size drill. That's that. Quick and easy. So, I'm going to have to put this here for a temporary setting. Actually, based on this kind of gap, you can see here, because of the curvature, this is not going to sit very well. Um, and it's going to lift off. I can get a spacer. So, there are other types of fittings like this, um, which come with all kinds of different spacer thicknesses. So I'm just going to go with a thinnest of them all. And with that come different mountings. So so this one is basically a oops a countersunk screw. Um, a countersunk flat washer. Something similar to that one, round back and spacer. So what you do with the spacer if you have um, curves you basically put a space in between and that lifts the device off the curve, something like that. So I'll have to put this through the bottom as before. Now my spacer gives me a little bit of a boost and now I can just screw this in and I'm isolated from that curvature. Huh, okay. So because of the thickness, this screw is too short. Thankfully, I have longer screws. Okay, so I have longer screws. Let's give that a shot. So I wasn't quite catching any tricks just now. And now I am. All right, way better. Okay, so that would mean now I have to swivel out as much as I can. And I need to figure this out. Okay, so I've got my kid's pencil here. 
let's draw an arc. So I've got an arc here and it runs down the middle pretty much. So now I need to figure out where to drill. And I'm going to draw a line which is from here to here. So I'm getting out the center like that. And then use a ruler. Connect the two dots. So our training in kindergarten to connect dots does have a benefit, right? And then I have to interpolate it onto this here. Okay. So, so basically what I did now is I just did the minimum that I need here to get the clearance for the lighter, in which case I would be able to take it out and put it back in. In this position, I drew a circle inside here. And that's 14, 14 millimeters from the edge and I think I'll be able to pull it off. So this is what I need to do. So I'm going to do it. And well, if it doesn't work out, I'll live with it and maybe just make another lighter holder in the future because, well, it's just PVC and the whole point of using PVC is, is that it is really, really, really cheap. So put that there, put this here, take out the lighter and get drilling. Okay, so the deed is done and let's see what happened. I need another long screw. Okay, so this is what I came up with and let's see where it fits. I can put the lighter in. Perfect, and I can take the lighter out with difficulty but all right, so it can come out. Um, so I need to now remove all this balance. And I guess I'll use a hacksaw combined with just a rasp. So just mark this all out. So after you cut PVC with a hacksaw, you basically are left with all this fuzz and all that. And that's where you just use the file to knock it off. Okay, and once so once you've got the edges done up, just take a knife and scrape it up and this will give it a nice, smooth, clean finish. Make sure your knife is sharp. So with that, we can install this. And okay, so that's that. I got it nice and locked up. So you want to take it out, just push it. And it clears the fire steel nicely and it comes out. This is downwards, goes back in. The retention is awesome on this one. So this is like that, this is like this. And last but not least, and there you have it. I'm quite happy with this actually. I'm supposed to put in a sharpener knife sharpener, the EE11 that I did a review on, but I haven't figured out where to put it. So, simple, more basic carbon. Uncle Wong's parang from Kolpila. I hope this wears in a bit. I should have put a bit more space in between, but I think once I've bolted everything down, it kind of makes everything a bit tighter. Maybe I'll put some washers here, I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay, so that's kind of sorted out. I replaced these normal Chicago screws with the same type with the spacer inside. And that basically lifted this section off and stopped compressing the sheet a bit so now the drawer is quite straightforward easy this should be here ok 
Okay, uh, Mora knife, as always, still very positive retention and lighter. Pop it out and can be removed. So that's that. And now I'm just going to wrap this rope around um, here and somehow here to make a waist belt. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so basically I just did a simple weave here around it and wrap some extra cordage um, just to keep some extra cordage and then I went through the back and it's just a simple loop that go and the rope that goes around the waist I'll size up it and tie a button knot in this and that's basically the, the knot will just come and hang up against that and this is basically how uh, the natives carry the parangs in this country some of them put a coin here as a stop against the eye but basically that's it so and when you travel you just wrap it all up and you're done it's very compact extra cordage so that's basically how i set up my parang more uh, basic carbon 12 inch parang with an 8 inch cutting blade um, and two sources of fire fire steel and a cricket lighter which over in the states would be a big it's a full size i put the um, gas end uh, facing downwards so that if any water gets in uh, we do fort rivers and all that quite a bit at least it's self draining and the button is protected so there's no chance of it accidentally getting depressed so guys uh, i hope you found this interesting and thank you for watching and i hope you get a few ideas uh, on how to customize your parang and i guess parang sheet and everything else together uh, let me know in the comments what you think uh, if you've done something differently if you have any other suggestions um, yeah but once again guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one cheers